So last weekend, Leah celebrated her 30th birthday. A big milestone for anyone. And so I thought I would turn the camera around on her and see what she has to say about what she learned during the decade of her 20s. Well, what do you want to wear? Yeah, I want my flowers in the shop. They're nice. <laughs> so, oh. you're 30 years old. Oh yeah. <laughs> you made it. I think you should write down about five things that you've learned over the course of the last decade. Are you gonna show them my terrible writing? <laughs> yes, yes, they will see your terrible writing. Damn it! Okay, I'll write it nice then. Number one, I am not an imposter. And I think that's one that I've struggled with for a long time. Like imposter syndrome is very real, I think especially in academia. It's less so about like people questioning you, but it's like what RuPaul calls your inner saboteur, right? You're like thinking that, you know, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, why are you the authority or person that should be sharing your opinion on anything? And realizing that as you grow, you know, like you're not an imposter, you're just a human being who's like trying to, to do your best and move through the world as gently and as kindly as possible. I think there's also a lot of pressure in your 20s to have it all figured out. You, you feel like an imposter from the beginning because there's like this expectation that in the 10 years from your 20s to your 30s, you're you're supposed to like accomplish pretty heroic things now. The expectations yeah. are really, really high. Well, you come into it being like, okay, your 20s are gonna be like the best time of your life. You gotta fit yeah. it all in. You have to party, you have to go to school, you have to meet someone, get married, have kids, but also like be fun and wild, but then also have your shit together by the time you hit 30. I'm like, yeah. that's a lot to do mm -hmm. in one decade. The second one is that being kind is undervalued, but so important. One of our really good friends wrote me a really lovely birthday card a few years ago, and he like did it on a typewriter. And But talking about how someone who is like truly kind is something that we don't value enough, right? It's all like, oh, they're nice. So-and-so, like if the first thing that you say about someone is, they're nice, it becomes like synonymous with like, they're boring, they're a pushover, they're whichever. And I just think that like, if you actually focus on like listening and hearing people, it's just gonna get you like farther in life as well, right? People will want to work with you. People will wanna be in relationship with you if you're just like a kind human being. I think that that's something you've taught me in yeah. the time that we've been together because mm -hmm. I think that I undervalued kindness. I think I, as a brash, loud person who <laughs> occupies a lot of space, utilized and benefited from the niceness of other people and uh, definitely didn't give it the credit that it deserved. Um, and learning to be your partner has been really valuable in that. Yeah. You make me cry, man. Number three, the more I learn, the less I know. <laughs> hmm. Which is probably a switch from when you started your 20s. Oh man, I thought I knew so much. <laughs> oh, and I like, okay, I was a very, uh, mom and dad, well dad, I know for sure you're watching this. I was a pretty great teenager. All in all, I didn't like argue with you or whatever else. But I think in my like late teens, early 20s, I was like, bitch, you don't know me. Like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna take your car whenever I want. Oh, sorry, did you need to get to work? I was partying with my like hot boss. You know, like I think 
there was a lot that I felt like I understood about the world and other people didn't. And these people who are slaves of the capital system don't see it the way that I see it. And I'm so real. I'm 20 years old and I know way more than you do. I have, I have lived, I have seen things. <laughs> I, I went down the Mekong River and like I got drunk in Bangkok, so I know things. <laughs> anyway, just to say like, you just, you don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just genuinely saying that I think we need to humble ourselves. It's a humbling decade. Oh, it's very humbling. Yeah. You spend a lot of time very like egocentric in your 20s, thinking about how do I better myself? How do I propel myself forward? And you forget that every single person that you pass, that you see, that you engage with online, is a fully complex human being mm. who has expertise in something. They have an understanding of something that you won't even begin to comprehend. Okay, can you take my tea? I need to take the camera now. Oh, oh no, does this go forward or back? You gotta press the, the Oh, thingy. I'm pressing the thing. No, then you push, yeah. Oh, I did here. it, I took it off the tripod. Look at me, I'm a vlogger. What I have learned is that plants bring me a lot of joy. Look at them, look at these lovely plants in my life. Um, sorry, they can't see you though. That's okay, the flowers are more important at this point. <laughs> I think like nurturing something that is alive uh, but they can't talk to you. They can't tell you its needs, you know? Uh, it, it's something really special. Mm. I don't know, it like externalizes some like care and things. So you kind of get out, of, you get out of your own way, like get out of your own head and just think about like, wow, this world's pretty amazing. Like look at all these little things that are like alive. I think this is a symbolic representation of your nurturing instinct that you have in you. Well, and I think there's a difference between when you are kind and you nurture other people, that can be a complex relationship, right? And something that we had talked to our therapist about how mm -hmm. there's a difference between giving and giving in. And you just don't have that same relationship with plants. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can set boundaries with your plants, you know? You're like, I don't have time to deal with you today. But if you don't deal with them, they die. So, you know, you just, you have to like nurture something, but in a way that, I don't know, feeds that without drawing on your energy. Puttering and doing small things sustain me and make me more appreciative. I think the pandemic in particular really articulated how doing things around your home, um, especially when you're like trapped there, you need to find ways to have that be nourishing for you. And um, so for me, that was like learning to bake bread and do that, but also just like doing laundry and cleaning your house, loading the dishwasher, doing dishes, like things like that, that actually um, are the undercurrent of your life. The that, foundation. Yeah, they make all of the like exciting things like, oh, I taught this class today, we went on this great hike, or we're gonna move to this amazing country, you know? But there's a lot of little puttering that needs to happen to make those moments occur. I relate to this in a deep, deep way. Yeah. Because I think I spent a lot of my 20s trying to avoid those tasks in mm. favor of more exciting, more life-changing moments. I was convinced right. that if I wasn't living an Instagrammable moment that mm -hmm. I was like somehow not fulfilling my potential as a person. And in the last three years, I think, I've, I've really learned that building up my support systems in my mm. home, yeah. making sure that I have food to eat, making sure that my house is clean, that the environment that I occupy on a daily basis is organized, yeah. is yeah. is hugely important for my mental health. I, I don't mm -hmm. think I, I realized just how important it was. Number six, I am queer. I knew that I was bisexual when I was 12 and would start using that language for myself. But it really wasn't until we got married that, that it became really important to me to think about the way 
that people perceive me and perceive like us as like a straight couple. Mm. So just queer in kind of all aspects of my life. And I don't think I would have, I wouldn't, even like two years ago, I don't think I'd have word, used the word queer to describe myself. Um, but the more I read about like queer identities and the more I understand it, you know, you've seen me, I like cry when I read certain things. And I'm like, oh, I just always thought that like, I was wrong. The way that I did relationships was wrong or the, the way that I felt about people and certain things was bad. And just realizing that that's because, you know, there are really strict ideas of what relationships should look like, what attraction should look like. And as soon as I realized I existed outside of that and there's this whole beautiful space and community that has been living and fighting for that for many years, I was like, oh yeah, this is where I belong. This is where I sit. Um, in my identity. Aww. Yeah. I had a really hard time not crying this whole video. Like, good ways, but you know. Yeah. Whew. I'm glad you made tea. And in my favorite book. I think it's the hardest work in some ways because mm -hmm. I think it's the thing that society celebrates the least because you pursuing your career and becoming an academic, you're expected to do that. You're expected mm -hmm. to go to university. You're expected to get a job. You're, you're supposed to do all those things, but working on yourself and finding a deeper understanding of, of who you are and, and what you value in the world, that's not really something we celebrate a lot. We're, yeah. we're way more hesitant to give praise to people who think deeply. Um, when it comes to your your identity as a person. I kind of want to like normalize like questioning as an aspect of our identities, mm. right? Like I think we think about our sexual identity and orientation as like this static thing throughout our lives. Once we figure out what it is, you know, and usually we're like, well, you're either you're straight or you're gay. And once you figure that out, that's, that's your life. Yeah, you got that's it. it, you figured it out. Yeah. And I think particularly if you get married, it's like a foregone conclusion. Like, oh, well, well you married this person, so clearly that's your identity now. And you'll and never do anything else ever again. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when you and I first started talking about getting married, I was like, look, this isn't going to be a, a traditional marriage. This is you and I on a journey together and deciding that we're going to be life partners. But like, what is that going to look like in terms of our intimate relationships, in terms of us growing and evolving as human beings? Like, isn't that like the whole point mm. of our lives mm. is to kind of keep evolving and growing and seeing how that changes in our communities. It's like an adjective rather than a verb. Yeah. Oh, I like that. This is cool. This is uh, an opportunity to sort of like platform Leah because if you're going to have your name in the title, oh. got to have those moments where, uh, you yeah. know, you're, you're up front. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, you can... <laughs> <laughs> Real talk though, I think that this video it's kind of a nice inflection point for what this channel is becoming. Because mm. I think we talk about intentional living often through uh, a productivity lens or, or like a yeah. sustainability lens, but intentional living for Leah and I is a lot about our personal growth as individuals. Um, so if this was relatable for you, if you enjoy, mm -hmm you know, our ponderings and reflections upon, uh, you know, the human condition, let <laughs> us know. Um, because we, we think about this stuff a lot and it's something yeah. we really care about and we would love to be able to share more of that with you. A lot of you who follow and subscribe to this channel are in your 20s mm -hmm. and 30s. So I wanna know, like, did this resonate for you? Were these some of your experiences and learnings as well? Or not. Or not. Or not. Maybe right? we're just a couple of dum-dums. Okay. No, I just said, the first one is I am not an imposter. <laughs> I'm not a dum-dum. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you team for watching. And uh, if you are subscribed, which you should be, that would be awesome. Uh, we will see you next week for another video. Bye. <laughs> Look at that cutie plant.